Meus queridos irmãos e irmãs em Cristo e amigos que nos acompanham, Dear brothers and sisters in Christ and friends who follow us, we got to tutorial of week four in this volume, Heirs of God of the series, The Ministers of the New Covenant. And week four has the title of message, Heir of all things, that is, the, ch the children, Heir of all things. We are speaking in last week's about Job 38, right when we saw there that God established as a limit grains of sand, the sand of the sea, for the waves of the sea, right? We know that we have, we are going through a pandemics, and this pandemics came as a great sea wave, a gigantic sea wave. We know that the sea waves they come in with a gigantic energy, and to be dissipated, this energy. It has a destructive force, but God is very wise. He did not face violence of the seaways with another thing violent, another thing strong. No, God faces it with simple grains of sand at the beach of the at the seashore. Thank God that we are this little grains of sand, even though we have a little strength, but the gigantic sea wave comes in with a gigantic energy. We are able to make this energy, energy to be dissipated in the friction between the sand waves, the, the, the grains of sand that it is, it is, it is dissipated that great energy through the sand grains. Those who can prevent this sea wave as the pandemics, which is destroying hundreds of thousands, more than a hundred of thousand of people are dying in this world. And the second wave is the wave of the, the clashing economics, therefore the second wave. So the, the church has a function to pray. We have in our hand, according to Ephesians 6, 10, we have a weapon which is the sword, the sword of God, which is the word of God. We also have prayer. We are little grains of sand. We have not much strength but we are able to face and go against this gigantic situation of this gigantic energy through our prayers and through the Word of God. So thank God that this Word, through this social isolation, each one is staying at home, but the prophetic Word didn't stop. And also the fundamental Word, and in the books that the Tree of Life Publishing House is publishing, and we are also broadcasting prophetic word every weekend on Saturday and Sunday. And this word is reaching out many people, and this word is going against this great strength of the sea waves. But the Lord is rever reverting back all of that for the benefit of God's people, for the advancement, for the spread of the gospel of the kingdom. So we through our prayer watch, it's working. The word is coming out, been dispensed through the broadcasts and through the books. Here I'd like to open a parenthesis that very good news to you that our co-porters, dynamic co-porters, are being able, even with this sanitary restriction, they're taking every 
precaution of remeasurement, but they're able to sew nearly 5,000 books a day through our co-porters. These are seeds of the gospel of the kingdom, and the kingdom of God is going through, going on through these seeds. So the Lord has not stop, stopped through the church. His word is advancing. Very good. So in Hebrews, we have seen in Hebrews chapter 5, verse 1, there we see the definition of a high priest, what what a high priest, priest does. For every high priest taken from man among men is appointed for men in the things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. That is, why do we need a high priest? A high priest aims at helping the people of God in their relationship with God. What should we do toward God? So the high priest has this function. Next, on verse 2, he can have compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray, since he himself is also subject to weakness. He speaks of the high priest according to the order of Aaron. He's a man. He's also subject to weakness. So second, what a high priest does. A high priest, he has compassion on those who are ignorant and going astray. So if you feel someone who always makes a mistake, every time you repent and go back to God, it seems that you go back to the same mistakes, do not be discouraged because you have a high priest who can have compassion on you. Have compassion, it is to understand you, to have empathy for you, to be able of knowing you, what your difficulties are, to know that you're subject to weakness, that you are ignorant toward God, but He is ready to assist you to understand you. And our Lord Jesus, he became high priest. When he rose up, God the Father begot him as only first begotten Son of God. That is, the first man was brought forth the Son of God. He became a firstborn Son of God. Not only that, at the time of generation, he was admitted within the glory of the Father. In this exact moment, he was also appointed high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. He is no longer according to the order of Aaron. Aaron was a man also uh, with weaknesses, but our Lord Jesus was tempted in our likeness in all things. He also knows our weaknesses. Therefore, if you feel that you are ignorant, the one who makes a mistake, who always are going astray, do not be worried. You have a high priest who can uh, have compassion on you. Therefore, uh, the leading ones in the churches, they need also to have these characteristics of a high priest. They need to first know their own weaknesses to have compassion on, on your sins because you are also uh, subject to weakness and you can also have compassion toward the young ones because you've been a young you were a young one before you can see a number of mistakes in them uh, ignorance on them but remember that you were also rebellious one day you were also a young one one day also committed a number of mistakes one day so let us learn to be playing this role of this high priest to have compassion on people. And our Lord Jesus, he is a high priest. He insists on leading us to God because Hebrews 2, 17 and 18 tells us that he is there to lead us to glory. He is author of our salvation. 
In Hebrews chapter 4, verse 14, seeing that we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast our confession. So our high priest is no longer on earth. Our high priest today, he is penetrated, has passed through the heavens. So, we can trust him. He is no longer a man subject to death, but he is in heavens. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Our Lord Jesus can sympathize of you. In these last days, we are speaking about that the archangel, the angel Lucifer, a long time ago, he was proud because God created him in an extraordinary way. According to the King James updated, he was created with an amazing beauty. He was created with much wisdom, and this wisdom made him fall in his splendor and fame, in his amazing beauty, and made him to brag about it and to be arrogant. So, he was created in a perfect way, so perfect way, he thought that God would need him to govern over the creation. Because God is a creator God. He doesn't understand the sight of the creature. So this angel, this archangel Lucifer, he thought to himself that God needed him as a joint king, someone who is on his right side to help him to govern because God would have to have him. Why? Because he was the most perfect of every creature. But he barely knew that God had already purposed from eternity past that his son would become a man. His son would then know what was like a human being. So, our Lord Jesus, he became someone who can sympathize with other men. And in this way, our Lord Jesus, he became a high priest to help men that he can sympathize with them and also to sit at the right hand of God to help God to reign. So here says, For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses. He can, but was in all points tempted, as we are yet without sin. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Isn't that wonderful? We do not have a high priest who do not understand us. Just like John one day complained, Job one day complained, Oh, do you have, are your days like the days of a mortal? You know, do you know my sufferings, what I go through, what my problems are? You don't know what it's like to be a man. You don't know what it's like to be a creature, but barely, Joe barely knew that Jesus became a man, and he knew the human nature, and he knows what it's like to go through all temptations, but without sin. He can, thank God, he can sympathize with our weaknesses. He can help us in time of need. Therefore, dear brothers and sisters, do not run away from God. Do not hide. Do not hide your face from God as if God will punish you. No. 
Jesus Christ. He is a high priest. He can sympathize with our weaknesses. Very good. Hebrews chapter 1. This week, the word is centered in Hebrews chapter 1. Verse 1, we read, God who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things, through whom also he made the worlds. Very good. God always spoke. Whenever God speaks, his work is accomplished. So the word of God it is of great importance to God. When God speaks, people begin to know God through his word. His word has the power of fulfilling everything. I'd like to show it to you. The Gospel of John, chapter 1. Chapter 1, verse 1. says, In the beginning was the word, the word, logos. The beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. So the word was God himself. The word was with God, and the Word was God. Verse 14. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. We beheld His glory, full of glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and of truth. In truth. That is, the Word became flesh. Our Lord Jesus Christ, He was the Son, but he became flesh. He came to know what is like human flesh. So the second of Trinity, the Son, he came on earth and he dwelt among us. This dwelt among us is tabernacle. That is the, the noun tabernacle, but in a verb form. So he set his tabernacle or tabernacled we can use that word among us. Our Lord Jesus, He was with God, who was God Himself, and He was the Word of God. That is, the Word reveals the person. If I am quiet, I'm a mystery. If I am silent, nobody knows what's going on inside of me, nobody knows me. But when I begin to speak, and my words reveal who I am. My words reveal what I want to do. My words reveal my heart's desire, my will. Therefore, Jesus, as the Son, He was the Word of God. This Son became flesh, became a man on earth, came to tabernacle among us to invite man to dwell within God. Look how marvelous this is. In verse 2, Hebrews 1, verse 2. And then he says, Has in the, these last days spoken to us by his Son? We see changing dispensation. We see the prophets in the Old Testament to speak with the people of God. But in the dispensation of faith, of grace, right after the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Lord, the Son, began to speak with us. And who is this Son? The Son of God, whom He has appointed heir of all things, through whom also He made the world. This Son, here in the book of Hebrews, is so mysterious and marvelous that this Son is so, so much the only begotten Son who was from eternity past in the bosom of the Father together with the Father. You know that the divine Trinity form one God, make up one God. We have only one God, only one God in essence in life, in nature. 
God is only one, yet God has his three persons of Trinity. This term, persons, maybe it's not a proper word, but we borrowed it from the Greek term, hypostasis. The three hypostases of God, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. The three of Trinity, they are coexistent from eternity past to eternity future. So they, they are coexistent, existing. They are different, yet they are co-inherent. What does that mean? They live one inside the other. They are one in the other. The Son is in the Father. The Father is one with the Son, and the Spirit is also one with the Father and the Son. That is, they are co-inherent. They are distinct, yet they are co-inherent. There are only one God. That is why in John chapter 14 through 17, that in the past messages we went over those, that the going of our Lord Jesus through his crucifixion, through his death and resurrection, aimed at bringing man into God's glory and aimed at preparing man, a, prepare a place in God for men. What God wants to do is to insert the first man, Jesus, within the glory of God. He became the first begotten Son of God to lead the many children of God that is coming to believe in Jesus. To receive God's life would be God's many children. And their final destiny of these children of God is also to be in the glory of the Father. Therefore, He his death and resurrection of Jesus aims at bringing us into the Father. And John 14 tells us, Don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? That is, the Father is the Son, the Father is in him. This is coherence. Also, John 17, verse 11. There tells us, I'm no longer in the world, but these are in the world, and I come to you. Holy Father, keep through your name those whom you have given me, that they may be one as we are. That is, the Father and the Son are one. And God desires to bring us into this oneness. Therefore, the work of God, it is a marvelous work. He wants to make us participants of this perfect oneness, which is in God. He was the only begotten Son of God. This is in John 1, 18. No one has... No one has seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, who is the bosom of the Father, He has declared Him. So that is the, the only begotten Son was the Father from eternity past, but now the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and in the end of His life on earth, He was crucified, He died for us, to make redemption for us, He rose up, God receives, receives him within him. He was begotten as the man Jesus, was begotten as the first begotten Son of God. And now he's not only only begotten Son, but he's also the first begotten Son of Man as a man, becoming God's firstborn Son. So these two aspects of the Son, only begotten and first begotten Son of God, are in Hebrews chapter 1. I want to speak speaking that God spoke through the Son. This Son is both the only begotten and the firstborn. So there is both a part of God and the Son and a part of man. The man, Jesus, who became God's first begotten Son of God. So we saw this marvelous thing 
Proverbios, capítulo 8. And also we have seen in Proverbs 8 that the Son was God's wisdom and God used the Son for creation. O Senhor me possuía, isso está em Proverbios 8, 22, 23. Proverbs chapter 8, 22 and 23, we read, The Lord possessed me at the beginning of his way before his works of old. I have been established from everlasting from the beginning before there was ever an earth. So the Son, before creation, he was with him himself, with God. And the Father used him to project creation. The Father made him to fulfill creation. So he was the designer, the, the architect. He was also the master chief under the command of the Father. Then on verses 27 through 31 we read, when God the Father, he prepared the heavens, I was there, the sun, when he drew a circle on the face of the deep, when he established the clouds above, when he strengthened the fountains of the deep, when he assigned to the sea's limit so that the waters would not transgress, he commanded his command, he marked out the foundations of the earth, that is, the sun was there. And I was beside him as a master craftsman, and I was daily in his delight, rejoicing always before him. It was his delight, his pleasure. And I was daily in his delight, rejoicing always before him. Another version says, I, the son, was the father's pleasure, and I, the son, lived happily the whole time with him. So this relationship of the Trinity, it is the most perfect relationship that there is. They lived in the utmost happiness, in the utmost oneness, God's agape love under the ground of righteousness in the glory of God. That is this marvelous relationship and God is inviting man when admitting the first son, the first man in glory, the first begotten son of God, Jesus, is, is opening the doors to receive all others who were to believe in Jesus and become his children to also take part in God's glory, in this joy, in this true happiness, in this true oneness, in this community of life, in this perfect relationship. This is what we call it perfection. He is leading us to perfection. Very good. So turning back to Hebrews 1, let me repeat it, verse 2. Uh, in these last days, spoken to us by his Son, whom he has appointed heir of all things. For God prepared and created the whole universe. For what? Not only he, it was through the Son that he created all of this, but for the Son that He created all of this. He wants to make the Son, the Son the heir of all things, and through whom also He made the world. That is, the Son was used to make the world, and the world is also for the Son. Verse 3, who being the brightness of His glory, an express image of his person. Very good. So before moving on, I'd like to remind you that on Friday of week 4, there speaks that 
Hebrews 9.14 says that Jesus offered himself up to God by the eternal spirit and all the accomplishments that God did on earth in time was cast in eternity. So you find in the Bible in Revelation 13.8 there speaks of the Lamb the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world that is from the counting of the days there was the Lamb. The, the Lamb of God actually did not die from the foundation of the world. He died afterwards. But when the work of Jesus was done in time, cast in eternity, it was worth it forever, from the beginning to the end of this age. So based on this, we can see that the redemption of Christ became also eternal, was carried out once and for all. That's why the blood of animals of gold, of, of, of all those animals, could only cover the sins, because it was something as a bill of sale. But when Christ died, his blood as the Lamb of God could be accepted for the forgiveness of sins, to remove sins. That is why in John 1.19, right? Cordeiro de Deus. John the Baptist saw Jesus for the first time and he said, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. That means so far, in Psalm 32 verse 1, it says the blessed uh, those whose iniquity is covered. So in the Old Testament, sins were covered. They were not removed. When the Lamb of God came, then, yes, this Lamb removes uh, the sin of the world. So his death was worth it forever, and then was worth it. The whole blood shed by the animals in the Old Testament was worth it because now the payment that would validate the blood of animals would be this, the blood of Christ. It was offered up by the eternal spirit and has eternal validity, thank God. So you, if you still have a weight, a burden from the past you're carrying on your back, know yourself that if you really repented, if you ask the Lord to forgive you and God forgave you, God already forgot it. Your errors, your problems in the past, before they're not buried with you anymore. You are not only covered, they were removed. Let us feel relieved to press on in this way, because the work of the Son of God was perfect. He accomplished all the work under the command of God. Very good. So in Colossians 1.13 says that he has delivered us from the power of darkness and conveyed us into the kingdom of the Son of his love in whom we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of sins. The world is under the influence of a chest a uh, they form principalities and authorities. They are a hierarchy. They are under the command of Satan, which is God's adversary. So he has the spiritual host of evil, which control this world, control human society. Satan also have demons on earth. His soldiers are also, they also have hierarchy, but thank God that God took us out of this empire of darkness 
and put us in the kingdom of the Son of His love. E, e agora nós, né, convey us into the kingdom of the Son of His love. And now we, in Colossians 1, 15, also says that He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. So He is the first of the all creation. He is the one whom all creation exists because of Him. He is the firstborn of, over all creation. If Lucifer, the angel of Lucifer, judged himself to be the role model of perfection of all creation, he was the most perfect of all creation. He is deceived because the Son of God who became a man, made the flesh. He is the firstborn of all creation. Therefore, if Lucifer one day thought that God had to have him as his joint king to rule over the creation, he barely knew that God already had planned to make Christ the firstborn of creation, and he then would become a man. And to govern and to over the right hand of God. Now, Lord, let us go back to Hebrews 1. Let us read verse 3. God is glory, who being the brightness of His glory, glory is God Himself, but who is the brightness of His glory is the Son, who manifests the glory is the Son. That is why in John 1, 14 says that we saw His glory, glory as the only begotten Son of the Father. So the only begotten Son of the Father, it is the brightness of His glory. That angel Lucifer who fell, he became proud by the brightness. His brightness, God placed him on a very important position among the highest ranks of God. So he became proud because of that. But now we have a son, a high priest, which is the Son of God himself, who was the, the brightness of God's glory, but he not became proud. But he humbled himself and God exalted him. Look what a difference. He is also express image of his person. This word, express image, we can understand that someone, when you stamp with an ink on a surface, on a paper, piece of paper, that ink is that imprint Christ is that imprint, that express image of God's person. If you want to have God's express image, is the Son. So the Son is this express image of His person. Is being God's person, God hypothesis of God. So when you have contact with the Son, the Son brings in the very substance of God to you stamping you with God's own substance and upholding all things by the word of His power. So the Son, He became so important in creation that He upholds all things, all creation, by the word of His power. Here, in Colossians 1.18, says that he, um, 1.18 says that he is uh, the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn for the dead, that in all things he may have the preeminence. So he is also the head of the body of the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from the dead. That is, he was the first one to be raised. 
So he is also the first one in the new creation. In the old creation, he is the firstborn of creation. In the new creation, he is the firstborn from among the dead. For what? For what? That in all things he may have the preeminence, have the heading up. He is the first. He is the head over all things. Therefore, we give him the first place in our lives. In all things, let us allow Christ to be our head. He is the one in charge. He is the one conducting us, guiding us, feeding us. Right? So in our home, in our families, in our marriage, let us give it to Christ who have the preeminence. He is our head in all things. Very good. And finally, our Lord is the one who came to earth, carried out what the Father wanted him to carry out because of us. He became a man to take part in creation, to have compassion on us. That is why the first thing that he did when he went out to his ministry, he saw the crowds as shepherd without a sheep. Sheep without a shepherd. Sorry. The, the crowd were afflicted and he, he sympathized on them. And he became a man to sympathize on them. Look how wonderful this is. And this compassion that God has with men, it is because he knew men. He knows what it's like to be a man. He knew the human nature. Not only that, he died for our sins, for the forgiveness of our sins, and for us to be able to receive God's life and to become children of God. Hebrews 1.3 This Son of God became a man, lived the perfect human life, and had by himself purged our sins, sat down at the right hand of the Messi on high. God exalted him exceedingly and gave him a name above every name, that every knee shall bow down, every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord and God made him to be seated at the right hand of the majesty. The majesty is the one who reigns. And now, was will sit at the right hand of the majesty. The one who helps is the joint king. It's not the archangel Lucifer. God chose to be a joint king, but the son of God, who became a man, and overcame all things. God then put him at his right hand today to reign over all things at the right hand of God. Having become so much better than the angels as he, he has by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. That is, the archangel Lucifer, he wanted to to step up in positions and ambition to be like the Most High, but God could not bear that. He was cast down to earth. But to this son who humbled himself, God exalted him, put him in his right hand, and we have a man also reigning at the right hand of God. And he inherited a name more excellent than man, than, in, than the angels, because that angel wanted to have a fame, wanted to have a name, and God did not let him. God gave a more excellent name, a higher name, than the angels, God gave it to Jesus. Jesus is our Lord. Thank God. And finally, we see in the book of Revelation, chapter 21, 3, the final product of God's work, it is the church as the bride of Christ, as the new Jerusalem coming down from heaven. It is God with us. This is translation of the Bible, um, the new Jerusalem, here, God with us, 
He says, And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. He will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them. The translation of the Bible of Jerusalem in this last statement is better. Let me read it to you according to that translation. It goes like this. Behold, the tent of God with men, he will be with them. They will be his people, and he, him, God with them, the compound name God with them, will be their God. Our God that through Jesus wanted to receive him to his tabernacle. And finally, after all this work, he was able to bring us into him. And the New Jerusalem will be this great tent, which is God with us. Our God will always have us in the Son, part of Him. Thank God our future is glorious. I hope that this helps us in this tutorial. May God bless each one of your lives. Jesus is Lord.